So in today's video, I am reviewing the Bluetti Elite 200 version 2 that has just been released. Now this unit can do 2600 watts continuously at 120 volts. It has a 2.073 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that is rated to do 6000 plus cycles. That means you can charge and or discharge this thing 6,000 times and it's still going to have at least 80% of its battery capacity left. Now typically these type of units you see 3,000 cycles if you're lucky. So they're making a pretty big claim on this battery. So we're going to test that out in this video as well. Now I can't necessarily test 6,000 cycles obviously that would take me forever. But what I can do is run an efficiency test and see how good this battery is or how efficient it is. And if we see over 80% that's typically pretty good, but I'm guessing with this battery claiming 6,000 plus cycles, I'm thinking we're going to get really good efficiency out of it. So we'll see. So out of the box, here's what you're going to get with this. You're going to get two different cables. One is the standard wall outlet charger that plugs into the side of the unit. And then the other is the PV cables, solar panel cables that connect right into the DC or PV input here. And you get the unit. That's what comes with it. So in the event of a power outage, I would use this to run, let's say a couple of refrigerators, TV, some lights, internet, those type of things. And it can run those for quite a while actually, boasting over a two kilowatt hour battery. You can hook up up to 1000 watts of solar panels between 12 and 60 volts is what the charge controller will accept. So at a thousand watts, if the sun's out, you can run all those appliances that I just mentioned and still get a charge on your batteries when that sun is out. And this unit can charge and discharge at the same time. So like I said, while you have solar panels plugged into it, generating power, you can use that energy right through to power your appliances. Now you can charge this unit in a couple different ways. One is through DC charging like solar panels or a cigarette lighter if you have the right adapter to your car. And it has just the standard wall outlet charging cable that comes with it. Now using the standard wall outlet to charge it, there's three different charging modes. There's one, which is just standard, that's going to be about 1500 watts and that's actually what i'm doing right now on it and then there's turbo charging mode which it'll do about 1800 watts in in that mode but i would be careful on that because if you have anything else plugged into your circuit your 15 amp or 20 amp circuit you're probably going to trip your house breaker so i would only run that if you know for sure you're only dedicating it to charge this thing and then there's the silent mode which is going to be about 800 watts and they call it silent because the fans on the side of this thing will not turn on to try and cool the unit. And you use the app to toggle that to change the different settings on charging. So let me just give you a brief demonstration of the app right now. So first thing you're going to do is download the Blue Eddy app. And then you're going to click on My Devices and make sure your Bluetooth is on. And you're going to see the unit just pop up on your screen just like this. And then hit and click on it. And then it'll show up right on your screen there. So. Click OK, and there we go, the binding successful. And then you can connect Wi-Fi to it as well if you'd like. I'm just going to skip that for now. All right, you can name the device if you want, and then there it is. It's showing up in the top right-hand corner there, so I'm going to click on that. And then I'm just going to connect via Bluetooth here for now. And there it is. We got it up and running. And as you can see here, it shows the grid. I'm grid charging it right now. It's at about 70%. Now let's go to settings so you can see exactly all the details on this app. All right, and here's your general settings. Now most of it you're really not gonna touch, um, but here's where you can change the charge settings. Um, you can add visitors if you'd like. This is where you're gonna be able to set your work mode when you want the batteries to charge, if you want to set a specific time for them to charge. And then here's your charge mode, the turbo silent or standard. So very easy to use. It literally took me like 30 seconds to be able to get this unit hooked up via Bluetooth and have the app running on it. So, and it's pretty straightforward. So not much. So here's the different working modes that they have here. The app's very simple to use. I'm not going to go into too much depth on it, but um, it's definitely very user friendly. You can use this unit also as an uninterrupted power supply. So what does that mean? That means you can plug it into the wall like I have it right now, charging from the grid. And then you can plug in whatever appliance you want into it. And if the grid failed or you had a power loss or a power outage at your house, 
it would automatically flip over and use the battery to run those appliances. And it would happen so fast that the appliance would not even shut off. It wouldn't even notice the power dropped. And you can even use the app on this thing to set what time you want it to charge. So if you have a utility provider that has tiered rate systems, you can actually set it to only charge it during the cheaper times of day. And you can also set it to charge based on what state of charge the battery is at. For instance, you could say, well, if the battery gets below 20%, then grid charge it back to 20% and then let the solar panels charge it the rest of the way from there. Now this unit weighs 53 pounds and it's 14 inches long, 10 inches wide, and 13 inches tall. Now right now they have this unit priced at $1,399, but they are running a sale on it up until December 3rd, 2024 for $1,099. And I also have a 5% off discount code that you can use, which is Texan E2 V2. And I'll leave that discount code also in the description of this video below. So now that you know the basics of this unit, let's go ahead and put this thing to the test. Well, this unit is rated for 2600 watts continuously. So I'm going to go ahead and put that to the test by using these space heaters here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the first one on to the 1500 watt setting. And as you can see, it jumps a little over 2000 watts at first and then backs back down to about 1500. So let's turn this next one on to the first setting, which should be around a thousand watts and then it should back off a bit. So here we go. All right, we're pushing we're past the max all of a sudden there. All right, we back just off the max now. So it held over 2600 without a problem. And now we're just cruising at about 2200 watts. Let's just run this for a minute here and make sure it can handle this load that's pushing it close to its max. Well, it's been running for a couple minutes with just those two space heaters on. Full blast, we're been around 2200, between 2100 and 2300 watts, no problems. I'm gonna go ahead and add this little space heater now, which is about 250 watts, and that should get it really close, let's see. All right, just turn that on. All right, we're over 2400 now. Yeah, we're right close to the max, so let's just see if it can hold this. So it passes that test. Here is how you charge this thing from a wall outlet. Very simple. Just take the power cord they gave you, which I have right here, plug it right into the AC input there. So as you can see, it says grid power right now. I just heard it turn on, there we go. I've got it in standard charge mode, so it should go up to about 14 to 1500 watts. So what it looks like is because I drained it to zero, it's starting out slow at 410 watts. It's been there for about 30, 45 seconds or so. Well, it's been about three minutes and now it's ramping up. Now we're at 1%. So it looks like it just depends on the battery state of charge. Being that it was ran down to zero, it just wanted to start off a little slower and now it's going to boost up to around 1500 watts. So I'm going to do a kilowatt hour test on this thing to see how efficient this battery is. So as you can see, we're charged at 100%. I've got a kilowatt meter on, so I'm going to turn on the AC output. And this meter should turn on. Yep, there it goes. And as you can see, we're using no watts. Got 50, uh, 60 hertz, 121 volts. We have zero kilowatt hours on it right now. So I'm going to plug in this space heater and run it on full, which is 1500 watts and see how many kilowatt hours of usage we get out of it. This battery is 2.076 kilowatt hours. So at 80% efficiency, I think that's going to be right around 1.7 kilowatt hours. Um, so let's go ahead and plug it in and give it a shot. All right, we're plugged in. Let's turn this on to the high setting. All right, we're on high. Let's see the watt wattage is whew, went up to about 2300 watts and now it's backing off as it starts to uh, get set here which is blowing really hot air right now so it's obviously working it's a 1500 watt heater on high so see the kilowatt hours change to 0 0.01 so we'll let this run and we'll see what we get well, it's been running for about an hour now. We still have 27% left on the battery. 
and we've used 1.36 kilowatt hours. Well, I've now been running this for about an hour and 25 minutes. You can see there's 5% left on the battery, and we have pushed 1.78 kilowatt hours through it on this battery on a full charge. So this is looking really efficient. We're talking 85% plus. All right, so we are down to 1% left on this thing, and we have pulled 1.98 1.99 kilowatt hours looks like we'll be right at two kilowatt hours which i believe is about 97 percent efficiency out of this 2.073 kilowatt hour battery so clearly they've used higher quality batteries in this which makes sense as to why it's rated for 6,000 cycles um, which is stellar for a portable solar power generator here and yep okay just clicked off Sure enough, two kilowatt hours is what I saw exactly, which is incredible. All right, so now I'm gonna use this DC power supply here that I can control the amps and the volts. And it basically it's gonna simulate solar charging it. So I've got it set for 33 volts and my amps, I've got it set for 11 amps, which is gonna be right around, uh, I believe 350 watts or so. So I've got this rigged up to my DC power supply here and to the adapter they give you on here. So I'm going to plug that in to the DC input and let's see what we get. All right, we're plugged in. Not sure if you can read this here, but go on. There we go. So now we're charging at 355 watts and that does match the screen at 355 watts. So let's go ahead and crank this up a bit since this can handle 1000 watts of solar. So let's boost it up a little bit. Now we can go up to 60 volts. So I'm gonna go ahead and boost it up. Right now it's at 53 volts. So we're at 53 volts, roughly 11 amps at 575 watts. Now let's go ahead and boost up the amps a bit. All right, now we're at just about 13 amps. It's bouncing around, there we go. I'm seeing 683 watts. Let's go up a little higher on the voltage to about 14.9, 15. That should max us out or get close to it. And yep, we are, we are at 871 watts right there. Let's try going up to 16 amps and see what happens yep 926 watts so we're pushing this pretty close to the max it's handling it pretty good now i'm going to put the current down a little bit and i am going to the amps so i just put the amps down lower and i'm going to put the volts up higher than 60 and simulate an over current and see if this protects itself and actually shuts itself down yep i put it to 61 volts and immediately i heard it click and it shut itself off. So it's got that overcurrent protection as well, which is good for safety. So as you can see, this Blue Eddy portable power station packs a pretty big punch, especially with that battery efficiency, that's stellar. So this is definitely a solid option in my opinion, if you're looking for some sort of portable power station. So I'd love for you all to leave an opinion on this in the comments on what you think of this unit. Well, that's it for now, everyone. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content just like this, and we'll see you in the next video.